Happy Valentine's Month, everybody. I'm the Sluggers Review, and I'm here today to share with you some of my favorite Valentine's Day episodes from TV shows or even movies. Um, not everything is all lovey-dovey. Sometimes Valentine's Days deal with heartache and everything. So some episodes will be romantic and lovey-dovey, while others will be very like sad and heart-wrenching and stuff but love is love it doesn't always come with like you know smiles and giggles and glee you know so i'm here today to talk to you about friends season three episode the one with the morning after i can't believe i never talked about this episode yet i thought for sure i had talked about it last valentine's day but then I remember, oh no, wait, I, I forgot about it and I was going to do it this year. And so, you know, this episode is actually my favorite all-time Friends episode. It really set the mark of how and what the show is and the direction it went in afterwards and stuff. And I remember back in the day when I used to watch Friends on TV... I was like a casual viewer. I was really starting to dig the show. And so one day I'm like, you know, I'm finally going to record an episode. Wait, what episode am I going to record? Well, it happened to be this episode. And this was the first episode I ever recorded. So it holds a very special place in my heart. That and because it's just extremely good. It deals with the aftermath of what happened between the whole Rachel Mark thing and the whole Ross and Chloe thing and what he did that unfaithful night. And what's really interesting about this episode is just it mainly like in the first part it deals with a couple other stuff. But when you, once you get to like the big reveal uh Rachel finding out it mostly just takes place in the apartment and that's it. It's just two people going at it while four other people are like eavesdropping and stuff. It's simple. It's nice. You know, it's not overly complicated and it's not overly jokey and stuff. It was really, really serious and really, really emotional. In fact, I wouldn't even really call this episode so much a comedy, even though they are um, hilarious moments sprinkled here and there. I would say it's more dramatic, more of a drama than anything else. It's when the show, the show always been serious, you know, and realistic and stuff. But it always had, but it was a sitcom. So it was always like, ha ha, he, 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 all over the place, you know. But this was one of those episodes where it's all like, hey, let's see how realistic we can go. And not only that, but it gave us the infamous were they on a break or were they broken up? Something that has been debated ever since like this episode aired in the show has ended. People are still debating it till this day and everything. And you know, it's funny because like, I don't think there's ever been a show where people are still hung over one moment and trying to find the answer to that one moment. That's how great this episode is. And, you know, I remember when I saw this, I'm like, no, not Ross and Rachel and everything. So then, of course, the aftermath of it, you know, you got to explore, like, what they go through afterwards. And then, you know, you just want them to be together and stuff because it's Ross and it's Rachel, which is funny because I'll get into that a little bit later. But basically what happened is, like... Early, so this is like the whole Ross and Rachel thing. He's been fanning over her ever since season one and way before season one even like happened. He's been in love with her ever since she was in high school and I think he was in college. Then I don't know how many years apart they are, which that's kind of gross now that you think about it. This show hasn't aged very well in some some parts it's a bit problematic but anyway he's been in love with her forever you know doing even something so nice as to like when she thought she got dumped by her boyfriend on prom he dressed up in a tux to take her out and everything 
only for her boyfriend to show up and he was heartbroken that got recorded and she saw that and then those two started dating afterwards and the moment finally happened fans have always wanted those two to get together and then they finally got together so then they started dating and stuff and it was really fun watching those two date and then she got fired from her job as a waitress. She got a better job doing stuff with like fashion, being an assistant. And Ross started to get jealous. He started to get jealous of her boss, Mark. He thought Mark wanted Rachel and stuff. And so that caused conflict between the two. Things got so heated that he was just super paranoid, super jealous that where she just like broke things off with him. And she said that, you know, we should take a break. And he's all like, all right, let's get some frozen yogurt. Let's cool down and everything. And she's like, no, a break from us. And so in his mind, that was a break up. In her mind, it was just let's cool off. Let's not talk to each other for a few days and then start back up. So he gets drunk at a bar and he meets a waitress named Chloe. She starts to kiss him and then they end up sleeping together, right? They literally slept together hours after he broke up with Rachel and stuff. So basically it starts off with her calling him, her like, you know, feeling terrible about the whole break thing and wanting to get back only for him to discover that, oh wait, that wasn't a dream. He did sleep with Chloe and she's still in the apartment. So Rachel shows up, he's trying to hide Chloe. And then he tells the guys, Chandler and Joey, and they think he's an idiot for doing what he's doing, but then they remind him, did you think about the trail? The trail of how Rachel could find out. So Chandler starts to like, you know, do some brainstorming and he figured out the trail of how Chloe knows Isaac and Isaac knows Jasmine and Jasmine knows, um, what's her name? Phoebe. Because Phoebe is friends with Rachel and them. And so he goes to each and every one of them trying to make sure, you know, they don't spill the beans when he gets to Jasmine, which her voice is adorable, by the way. She has a roommate, Gunther. May he rest in peace, the actor who played him. And so, like, of course, Gunther is in love with Rachel and doesn't like the idea of Ross and, you know, them together. So he tells Rachel and she is fuming pissed while this is all going on. Um, Rachel had told Monica, you know, they broke up, which put like she was doing something with the blender and her fruit smoothies now on the ceiling. Monica is a neat freak when she's cleaning it with the mop. Phoebe shows up with a package and it's some, something, some type of like organic, like wax from the rainforest and stuff. So they want to try it out. Waxing the legs. <laughs> it's so painful. They're screaming and hollering. It's not as gentle as like, you know, the thing said on TV. I bought something on TV one time, a computer for college. Boy, that thing was huge back in the day. And it was over 500 stinking dollars, man. Or no, no, it was close to like a thousand, I think. Computers were expensive back then. But then it was even more expensive because I got it from one of them home shopping crap. And they jacked the price up with the shipping and stuff. And it came with a printer and everything. And I think it came with like a webcam. It, it, it was expensive. It was expensive. And so the boys run in thinking the girls are being tortured and, you know, they find out they're just waxing their legs. They don't believe it hurts that bad. And then they try some on Joey where he finds out it is. Now, the cool thing about the DVD is that the, the um, deleted scenes are on the DVD. But then they overhear Ross and Rachel arguing and their argument lasts all from the afternoon to night to early in the morning until around like four in the morning and stuff that is how long that like argument lasted and stuff 
and it makes for some really good dialogue. Now, of course, the other guys are in there eavesdropping and stuff. They're talking at normal volume. I don't know how Ross and Rachel couldn't hear them. I never understood that about TV. How did they people not hear them? So anyways, she starts asking him some good questions. He's all like, you know, he made a mistake and she should forgive him. And she's all like, you know, what if she had slept with Mark? Would he have forgiven them? Of course, he plays off like, sure I would. But then she starts describing it in very intimate ways. And then, of course, he doesn't want to hear it. So, truly, he knows he screwed up and he would not be okay with something like that. So, while the other gang's in the room starving, eating the wax and everything. And it's like, you know, this whole, like, segment with Ross and Rachel is just so fascinating. And I really ate that up growing up. I was just like, man, all they're doing is talking and arguing and saying some funny stuff here and there and then crying. And I found that so riveting in a way. Like, that was some good dialogue. This was a good moment. It was staged right, you know, and the dialogue kept me entertained. To where I didn't even need no jokes and stuff. And Rachel just can't let this go. Ross is trying his best to get back with her. Even kissing her. To the point where she just pushes him off. And she's done. Like she is literally done done. And he leaves like so sad. And what's really interesting is their outfits they're wearing. They're parallel to each other. Like when they first came in the door arguing and everything. They both wore these heavy green jackets. Then later on, they um, revealed they're basically just wearing like sweaters and pants, but they're the same color. Rachel's wearing a dark brown and um, Ross is wearing like navy blue like sweater and some jeans. But what's interesting is that she's wearing brown on brown and he's wearing blue on blue. And then when the light hits it just right, it looks like they're both wearing black. Which sets the mood because this is a very dark scene. And they don't even turn the light on in like, you know, I think, the, I, I don't know if they had the light on in the house or not. It could have been dark inside. I remember it was dark when the other gang tried to like sneak out. But in a way, this like really devastated me back in the day because they had broken up. I'm like, no, not them. They're supposed to be like the ultimate couple and everything. And so like, what's one interesting thing is that David Swimmer back in the day, he said that he's happy those two broke up and everything, but he didn't explain why. Now, many years later, it turns out Jennifer Aniston did not invite him to her wedding um, because she didn't get along with his then wife and stuff. And it makes me wonder what kind of person really is Jennifer Aniston and what kind of person really is like David Swimmer, you know, because people are completely different than what they are on TV. And I know she's been married so many times and it makes you wonder, is it the guys or is it her? I don't know. I've always liked her as an actress. Rachel is all my, always my favorite. But Jennifer Aniston will not let me follow her on social media. I have no idea why. I've never done anything bad to her. I've never even said anything. It's probably one of those things to where it recommends people for her to follow. And she probably don't like the people I follow on my list. Which, that is my business. I follow whatever celebrity I feel like following. And they nobody else should have like a say in it. <laughs> I hate when people do that crap, man. And female celebrities do that a lot. They're so judgmental and picky and stuff. Now, wasn't that romantic or depressing, depending on what kind of video I just talked about? <laughs> okay, well, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Bye.